Hi everybody, my name is Mike King and today I'm here with E. Michael Harrington who is a copyright expert um, and also an instructor at Berkeley Online. Michael, thank you so much for, for joining us oh, today. My pleasure, Mike. Um, we're very excited uh, to be talking with you um, and I expect to have a very lively conversation about copyright. Okay. Um, and I follow your blog which is fantastic. Oh, thank so you so I'm much. learning a lot there. Nice. Um, you know, maybe I, a good place to start would be um, just um, copyright basics in the United States, maybe mm -hmm. why copyright exists, uh, a little bit of the history of copyright and how we got to where we are right okay, now. Okay, sure. Well, copyright is in the Constitution. It goes back to 1790. We base it on what we knew from England, the Statute of Anne and I think 1710. But it's in the, it's in the Constitution where we were creating a government from scratch, like a project on the weekend, some guys get together and write this big document, you know. But it's Article 1, Section 8. It lists, it's where the you list the powers that Congress shall have. And you know, then later on you define the government or what different parts of the government do. But it, it said Congress shall have the power to promote the progress of science and useful arts. Yeah. And that was the main point was doing that. It wasn't to say, oh, let's endow these creators with a ton of rights. It was to say the first most important point is to promote progress in science. So, and then the way to do it is part of that sentence also. So to promote the power of, uh, promote the promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing to authors and inventors the exclusive rights to their respite, respective writings and discoveries. One other little phrase in there was, it was for limited times. Mm -hmm. And initially they meant that, okay, the copyright owner is going to have a monopoly on what he or she created. In those days, the most important thing you could author was a map because the, the planet was big and we didn't know what was going on. So <laughs> maps. But it was for limited times. It, they meant 14 years. Then it, then it was a renewal, 14 more, 28. And then eventually it becomes the life of an author plus 70 years, mm -hmm. which is way too long. And when did I, that happen? That last part happened in 1998 uh -huh. with the Copyright Term Extension Act. Yeah. It's called the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act because mm -hmm. Sonny Bono was a songwriter in addition to being a congressman. And he, you know, like a lot of musicians want, they just think if something's good, more of it's even better. Mm -hmm. So a longer copyright they wanted and, and he had just died. He'd, he'd had a tragic accident, so they named the, the bill after him. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so it's in the, the Constitution. And then, then we start to, the first Copyright Act is known as an, an act for the encouragement of learning. Those are the first words. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on for many, many more words. Yeah. But the point was, for we in the United States who were kind of uneducated, we were primitives in a big land, mm -hmm. with very few resources that that we need to uh, get get good books and anything out to the population. Mm -hmm. Actually, in the first Copyright Act in 1790, music wasn't in it because mm -hmm. the idea: why would you copyright music? What does that mean? Yeah, that was a foreign concept. Yeah, so no music so, um, was copyrighted in the United States prior to 17 or prior to when? Uh, 1831. 1831. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And even then, it wasn't even the derivative. Yeah. Like nowadays, so many things yeah. are based on derivatives. Yeah. But, so it starts then. In fact, if you, I love looking at this. If you list, you know, how in Article One, Section Eight, what they're listing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things is currency. Uh, we can coin money. <laughs> we can have. A, we can create a war. The, co the Congress can. Uh, they can have post office. Post office roads. And then the eighth one is the copyright and patent clause I just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for that. After that comes Army and Navy. Mm. So we're listed above Army and Navy. Oh, wow. That's how significant copyright is. That's, that's a really great way to frame it. You know, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> is, is, you know, are there similarities in other countries to what we have for copyright, like in Great Britain as an example? Yes, there are. I mean, and... and a lot of it is based on similar ideas that, okay, we're going to give monopolies to the creators, the authors, the inventors, for a limited time, and then we're going to reap the benefits. And if they can, after, it's, after their term is over, it goes to the public, mm -hmm. complete public good, mm -hmm. like anyone could write Romeo and Juliet because mm -hmm. it's old. Uh, so, yeah, other countries are trying to do that, and other countries sometimes have more rights and it's a stricter copyright. Sometimes it's looser. Yeah. And there are other things added, what are called moral rights, yeah. uh, which are kind of odd. That says that if I didn't like the way you performed my piece, my piece of music, you are dishonoring my integrity and my reputation. Oh. It's a moral rights offense. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's also, it's very, we have it in the United States when it comes to visual art. Uh -huh. So if you, put, if, you did a, if you bought someone's very large painting and you had the right to exhibit it, 
you couldn't hide, you couldn't cut off a corner, say you don't want to show the author's name. All right. You'd have to show that. If the painting was gigantic and came in several big, huge sections, like say five, and yeah. said, well, we only have room for four, we're going to show four. No. You would be violating copyright. You'd be violating copyright. That's incredible. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, this oh. thing called, well, it's moral rights. And, yeah. And we have it with visual art, but not with music. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad we don't have it with music. We have enough complication without saying Believe me. Yeah. some of the other stuff. You it's know? true. Yeah. So in um, one of the courses uh, that, that I wrote called Music Business Trends and Strategies, we talk about the six exclusive rights. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can uh, talk about those rights and how they're a positive thing for musicians, mm -hmm. and then maybe talk about some difficulties that exist with the current structure of copyright. Sure. Oh yeah. Well, one is the right to make a copy. Yeah. And th what that normally meant was uh, you might have to go to some trouble to duplicate a piece of music you heard. You might have to write it all out and then re reperform it. Um, but when it comes to capturing something digitally, oops, there's an issue. It's very simple to yeah. copy. Yeah. Also, when, if you're reading online, you're technically copying something. So just the act of reading means it, it came from somewhere and a copy was made and displayed to you. Okay. So those became those have become some issues even to deal with that That's are outside incredible. of music. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, there was even a case over turning on a computer. Yeah. And suddenly they said, well, you duplicated this material that's copyrighted. Because computer code is is copyrightable. It can go so deep. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. So we have way more troubles. Yeah. And then there, there's some, there have been some, uh, there's been common law, some judicial decisions to help, you know, define copyright. Yeah. But, but but for some of the rights, the right to perform is a big one. Mm -hmm. that when you when when your music is performed, you're entitled to be be paid for it. Mm -hmm. And what most people do is they sign up with someone who can regulate and you know you do all the heavy lifting for me and you check out where I'm being played. And that's ASCAP and mm -hmm. EMI and CSAC. Mm -hmm. So that there's a right. Uh, derivative rights are some of the most fascinating. So if I wrote a well, okay, I worked for. Um, um, uh, uh, Colin, uh, well, Colin Ray's a song where he wrote a song for Colin Ray. His name is uh, St uh, Don Schlitz, sorry. <laughs> and Don, uh, Don's first song was called The Gambler. Yeah. Uh, it was a huge hit. Uh -huh. It turned into four movies. So yeah. it, you, only Don was allowed to, write, to create you know, those movies or to even delegate to say, you can write a movie that's based on my song. Is it based on derivative rights? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if you see something, a, a nice play or something, you, you're inspired to write something like it or yeah. derive from it, it's a fine line. Like, is it is it a derivative of what you've just experienced? Yeah. Or are you changing it enough? Or do you need the permission of the, the author? Yeah. So to do those four movies, they needed his, uh, Don Schlitz's permission. Yeah, right. I can see that. And so derivatives, hugely important. Like yeah. the, one of the most famous examples is George Lucas with Star Wars. He had the, I think he didn't accept much money for the initial Star Wars, mm -hmm. if any, but he had the right to make derivative works from the characters. And Interesting. I mean, maybe that's the reason, isn't Motorola using a phone called Droid? And I believe that Lucasfilm gets paid for that. Oh, I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen the copyright, you know, thanks to Lucasfilm wow. or whatever. Yeah, it's really mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's one uh, right that is uh, you've spoken a little bit about, um, which is the right to reprint lyrics. You mm -hmm. know, um, and I might not be framing it properly, but that's exactly what you know to to republish the lyrics. Right. Um, and there's been some stuff happening recently that maybe you can talk about related to that and online sites. Yes, there yeah. has. There's a company. Um, I I look at lyrics online a lot. Uh, often, if I'm with my work as an expert witness, I often have to know every little nuance, every syllable. Yeah. And if I can't hear it, I'll often go online, and or or I'll, or sometimes just get the lyrics. And then start to say, are those right and improve from there? Yeah. So, yeah, there are companies and there are fans. Outside from that viewpoint, there's really fans who love the song and they, they, got this, they got the music the day it came out and they post the lyrics and other fans are saying, cool. And then some, there's a, some sites where they say, let's talk about those lyrics. Like, mm -hmm. what, does he, what does he mean when he's saying this mm -hmm. about the Toyota or this or, you know, is there symbolism? So they annotate the lyrics. Yeah. And... The question comes down to, though, who owns those lyrics? You you made a derivative work, in a sense. You took someone's lyrics 
and well, first you copied them, mm -hmm. and you could also say it was derivative because your work, your new lyrics, couldn't have come unless they were derived from the previous one. Right. And then, furthermore, fans get involved and start adding, here's the meaning, and no, the lyric is this, yeah. and so forth. So those are some of the issues, Like, and one of the companies is Rap Genius, Yeah. and I, I find them to be really cool, and I, I, I there was a issue with them that erupted one day, and I literally heard from the Washington Post immediately they wanted to interview me about it, and they did. And, you know, I said, well, yeah, I use it, and I see it's good, and so forth. And they asked me that if a fan takes all the lyrics, complete lyric, and posts it, or Rap Genius does, whomever, it's up here, and then they're adding, they're transforming it by adding this other meaning and saying what, what's going on with this, the transformative value. They did, in other words, they didn't just copy it, they added some stuff to it. They said, would that be a fair use? And I said, probably not if it's the entire thing. I mean, if you took portions of a lyric, you know, then that's different. Mm -hmm. Sure, we should be able to take segments without permission. And that's allowable to an arguable extent mm -hmm. under what's called fair use. Mm -hmm. but, so if you, but if you took the entire song and then reprinted it and then added what the lyrics mean, mm -hmm. I didn't think that in itself was probably fair use. Mm -hmm. it, maybe uh, one, if a professor did it one time in a class, sure. that's fine. Yeah. But if the professor finds, you know, next semester I'm going to do that too. Yeah. Well, at that point, it's no longer spontaneous. So the professor should probably get permission. Yeah. Some, you know, something like that. So they asked me my opinion on that, and um, they, 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 I think they included it. But then they called me back and said, you know, we found what you had to say really interesting, and could we interview you further? Yeah. And they did. And then I made some remarks that I really want Rap Genius to win if this was a... I said, first, it should be just peacefully resolved. Yeah. You can... Rap Genius has... There's some kind of business going on. I don't know, advertising, yeah. something. Yeah. They make some money, and they're taking someone else's work yeah. to make that helps make the money. This should be some something like commercials on television. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think in Rap Genius's case, though, they they weren't making money. At least they weren't doing advertising yet. So that you know leads me kind of to the next question, where um, you know clearly copyright is very beneficial to artists, um, as you mentioned, performance royalties, mechanical royalties. It's mm -hmm. a lot of different income streams. Uh, sure. Practically, almost all of your income stream is based on copyright in some way. And a big, strong federal government. It's mm -hmm. not a state law. It's a big, big this enormous government's backing you. Yeah, yeah, that's so. a good point. So with that understanding, um, and then, you know, the understanding that it's harder than ever for artists to get awareness and that, so, you know, it's almost like there's there's two different things going on and I'm, I'm wondering where where you land. So Rap Genius is a great thing for fans. It's a great mm -hmm. thing where uh, fans come together, discuss the lyrics, um, and, you know, it's an engagement tool almost for, for artists, right? Right. So where, where are you at in terms of, um, you know the uh, kind of the the complexity of copyright, the the need to have copyright uh, for musicians, but then the idea that technology is changing things, mm -hmm. the internet is changing things, and and changing the way that people kind of gather together around things, and sometimes copyright, the traditional sense, might take a little bit of a hit. Right. Um, wh where do you land on that? Well, I am am really with the Constitution that the tip of the meaning being that the first beneficiary is the public. Yeah. And with these lyrics, for example, it's not just the fans. I'd argue it's education. I mean, I've taught courses in history of different genres of music and styles, and uh, I've taught an African American music class, Caribbean, various things. And and I want access to knowledge like that. Yeah. I want Rap Genius to stay around or any other site that does this. Yeah. So I, I, I think first find a way it can happen. And then back to what you said though about copyright, that the fact how technology has affected it. Yeah. I mean it used to be if I just take out my iPhone, this I, the iPhone I have is more powerful than the city of Philadelphia in 1790 or yeah. Boston. Right. So I have this much power and I can copy this quickly. I mean part of the way it functions is just to copy, 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 copy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's no longer a difficult question, you know, like, is it... I mean, when, when things were harder to copy, they weren't copied as much, but now it's just how things operate. So you have to now back down and, and back away from it and say, what's how should this really work? Mm -hmm. And we as professors say, 
require our students to infringe copyright. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you write a, a school paper, or high school, college, or whatever, you have to quote from other sources. And you don't ask permission of the author or the publisher. They wouldn't bother mm -hmm. responding, and mm -hmm. you need it the next morning. Mm -hmm. So you quote, you take a portion, and you attribute it. Mm -hmm. Now, that's how it should work. That is infringing copyright, if you look literally at what copyright means. Yes. You took without asking. The, you, they had the right to exclude you. They exercised that right, but they look the other way and say, well, it's fair use. Mm -hmm. um, and the same kind of thing with music. Can't you quote from other lyricists or a, a certain chord or a certain pattern of, of notes? Why can't you quote that to conjure up something? Mm -hmm. Like uh, if you're doing a parody, for example, you have to. Yeah. Quote. You're, the Supreme Court even de decreed how it's to be done. You have to strike at the heart of a song. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to copy from other works of authorship, books, mm -hmm. articles, music, films, television, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that's an interesting idea because someone can say, uh, there's a quote by, I think, Mark Twain, you know, when somebody's giving a speech, you're hearing from that person, but you're hearing from 10,000 people that have come before, you That's know, right. that they're borrowing these ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how, what legally is um, too, too far, you know? Um, like as an example, I know George Harrison got sued successfully. Um, right. Uh, not on his part. You know? yeah. <laughs> he lost the case um, mm -hmm. because I forget exactly what the song was. It um, was my, his his my sweet lord and uh, infringed. They thought uh, he's so fine. Yeah, by that's the right. Chiffons. That's right. So um, you know, with the idea that you know all of these ideas and you know, there's only so many chords you can play and so many notes you can play. Mm -hmm. At what point um, does is it clear that somebody has infringed? It, there's not, if you read the copyright law to say, like, I really want to be a good citizen. Yeah. I want to know copyright. I don't want to infringe anyone. I'm a responsible songwriter, composer. You read the law, 135,000 plus words, you'll learn nothing. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing in the law. It doesn't help you. The word melody occurs once. Chords, rhythm, note, tune, tempo. Yeah. They're not in there. Yeah. So what it comes down to is the definition of copyright, which we hadn't got to just yet, the actual oh, yeah. definition. And that's not in the copyright law. Copyright protection is defined, mm -hmm. but only as like a state of being. It, it's Copyright protection subsists uh, in original works of authorship. Yeah. So it has to be original, and they have to be fixed in a tangible form. Sure. Yeah. So someone's outside on Boylston Street right now improvising up a storm, something they're just creating, and they're doing it. Uh, it's brand new. It's original. It's not copyrighted because mm -hmm. they're not fixing it. Mm -hmm. If they're recording, if they press record and then that's strum right. away, then it's copyrighted. And that's it, it's copyrighted right away. You don't have to right. ship it to the copyright office. Oh it's, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And if you if you worked on a, a big piece, it took you thirty days or three hundred days. Yeah. You know, every single version every day is protected by you because mm -hmm. it has the two things: it's original to you, and it's fixed. Um, and and so. Yeah, that's that's one of the. Uh, well, what it comes down to is you measure originality to determine. Like you, I think you're asking, is there at what point do we infringe? Yeah. Like, is it these three notes? Exactly. These Thirty, yeah. and there's no set way. Yeah. So I have my standards. What I have to do is really understand expression, uh -huh. uh, like in country, in classical, in hip hop, um, in rock. At what point is this? new and original. Mm -hmm. Like we're talking today and we've talked over the years at different times. We've never said an original word to each other. That's right. And I hope we don't. <laughs> I mean, the point being, yeah. what's original is we st string together, like in the Mark Twain idea that you heard all these yeah. other voices, we string together all these things we've already heard. Uh -huh. And But we, I, I think in different ways than you, so you're going to come up with the same, we might have used 300 different words at this point. I've used 300, but Boy, it's all so different. Mm -hmm. So you have to determine then at what point is this musical expression, in this case we're talking music most, mostly here, mm -hmm. so at what point is it original? And if it's, like I would argue, well, in my blog I do a lot of this, uh, <laughs> that this melody is not original. Mm -hmm. Like I trace it back and back and back. So don't don't sue over some small little segment. Yeah. Uh, and then it gets worse with, with some lyrics. Oh, yeah. The dumbest case I see going on right now, there are so many dumb ones, which one to choose from. <laughs> and one would be Rick Ross suing LMFAO over one of them says, every day I'm hustling, the other says, every day I'm shuffling. And it's like, so what's 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 a, taken is, every day I am. 
To me, that's two so words. It's those, it's those lyrics that they're yeah. saying. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. We can't have sunk in this low and yeah. this stupid as a society to, yeah. to sue over every day um. Because Rick Ross is not the first person to have said every day um. It's just too small. Yeah. Um, and, but the, and the rest of it musically is nothing alike. They're both hip hop. Yeah. So th what would happen is, in a case like that, LMFAO and Rick Ross, they would bring in somebody like you to say, this is ridiculous. Right. Um, that's what the LMFAO, yeah. the defendant, would do. Yeah. And that's, that's what I do a lot. Yeah. Uh, it, all the time. That's, <laughs> that's got to be a that's, small people that could do that, you know? I mean, a small yeah, group of people, I guess there you know? aren't yeah. that many of us who, yeah. who do it, especially as, as often as I do. Because you have to have this encyclopedic knowledge. That's a real small example, but... Um, you know, we were talking about the Michael Jackson example before, mm -hmm. you know, the cameras went on. That requires you to have this broad history of, of you know, kind of, um, you know, history of music. Right. Yeah. Well, the best thing to do really is uh, if you focus on only one style of music, mm -hmm. that's trouble. Mm. I mean, to get, it, it, in my I have a doctoral degree like a lot of people do. And to do that, you surely had to focus in on some things. Um, they didn't test me, my knowledge of hip hop at that point. They didn't test my knowledge of country mm -hmm. but all along I've always been working in different fields and I analyze everything I hear mm -hmm. I, I categorize I have three big databases and I'm never I mean I wake up with looking for like ah that melody occurred to me in the dream that I'm yeah. looking for for this case so yeah. I just try to find what's in common between all kinds of musical expression yeah. it's too obvious to say what's the difference between Bach and Tupac right I mean, what yeah. they rhyme, yeah. but, you know, but yeah. they, there's so many differences. But what about the similarities? And when yeah, you can find that, it's fascinating. I mean, it, you'd almost think that almost anything that is created right now, you can find some similarity in the melody or mm -hmm. in, the, in the music elsewhere, right? So right. It, it's almost, it makes me think almost anything can be litigious. You know, you can sue oh, over yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, what I get into is, uh, the way I view it is, as I said earlier, I was trying to get at this idea that everything we're saying is unoriginal. I, yeah. You know, you're using words that everyone's used, yeah. as am I. But, and so at this little point, say, it's not original. It's not original, not original. Not. Now it's original. Mm -hmm. And that one, whoa, that was original right here. Yeah. This one's original after two feet of space. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? A lot yeah. of space. So if you know that, then you, and you have a standard, you, you know, like I can't trace... I'll give you a funny example from Katie Lang, mm -hmm. her song Constant Craving. Um, it, it, she says, uh, well, it, constant craving has always been. Those are, that's the, the words. And the, the notes are flat three, two, two, one. And the Rolling Stones did that same four notes. It's the bottom three notes of the minor scale. Mm -hmm. da, 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 dum. And they did the same. And she sued, created some action. And they wanted to get this over with quickly, and they settled. They gave her half the money. Mm -hmm. That's absurd. Mm -hmm. Now, had they taken the entire phrase, not mm -hmm. constant craving has always been. Mm -hmm. Flat three, two, two, one, flat three, flat two, one. Mm -hmm. Now, those are seven notes. I've never seen them anywhere mm -hmm. but her. Mm -hmm. It's only seven notes, but they oh, didn't take that. They took yeah. the part that's the bottom of the, the funeral march of Chopin. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You know, so it's not, Sh Sh Chopin doesn't own it either. It predates Chopin, but it surely predated Katie Lang. Sure. So that's what I mean by looking too closely I at see. something. Yeah. Like, why are you starting a lawsuit over something this foolish? So what, what's an artist to do that um, might be nervous uh, about something they've created to, to know if it is um, infringing on something else? There are several things you can do. One is... You, you talk to your friends and other people, see what they yeah, think. Yeah. If they, if if you're not getting a good enough answer, if you really want to be sure, you contact someone like me, mm -hmm. and I can usually quickly say what's what's going on with mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. um, and give my level of, of assurance. And sometimes they will go to the publisher. The publisher will contact me, the manager, the I attorney, see. the record yeah. label. So I've always been uh, involved in that's sort of like preemptive work. Mm -hmm. Like we're not we're about to put it out. Like, I do a lot of work in advertising where they really want you to think. They want to connote the Beatles um, getting better. The, the Sandals, that yeah. company, Sandals.com, they yeah. have these vacations. They have this, da, 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 this striking opening, and then they go into that song from, um, what's it from? I've had the time of my life. What was that? Oh, Dirty Dancing. Yeah, but, right, yeah. So, but they start out with this Beatles sound alike. Yeah. So what they did was they 
probably went to someone like me. That I was not involved in that one. And they try to come close to sounding like that striking opening of It's Getting Better. Yeah. Where the Beatles were just hammering the yeah. strings. Yeah, da, da, da. That yeah, yeah. So they imitate that. And then the need an opinion is, is this getting too close? Are we infringing the copyright of the Beatles or not? And it's just an opinion. I mean, right. that's, that's all it is. There's nothing you can say where it's no. like these six seconds are, you know, because right. I've heard that a lot. People will say, well, if you, you don't, you know, mess around with, you know, if it's less than six seconds, you're oh, cool or no. something like that. Oh, those you know? rules are so yeah. sad. Yeah. I, mean, the, I hear them too. Like, yeah. I, I used to believe that stuff. I would mail, like you, you mentioned earlier, that, yeah, copyright starts immediately. You mm -hmm. don't have to go send to Washington and pay you $35 just yeah. yet. Um, or you mail it to yourself. I did that. Yeah. I wrote a ton of haiku in the 80s, and yeah. I mail these big packages to myself just because I heard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But those those stories you hear are, are like, not as good as parables. They're, they're really false. Yeah, yeah. There's no... I mean, I can show you four notes that are, like, you take those four notes, that could be trouble. Yeah. And when they say no chord progressions copyrightable, that's absurd. Of course yeah. they are. Yeah. The first four chords of Beach Boys... Um, Warmth of the Sun, mm -hmm. C major, A minor, E flat major, C minor, mm -hmm. had never happened. It is a shock. When you go from that A minor to the E flat and then back to C becomes C minor, yeah. that's like stunning. Wow. And why? And also, if a melody is copyrightable, uh -huh. a chord progression is three melodies simultaneously, right? at least. Yeah. So why wouldn't that be copyrightable? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people hear things like the blues, you can't copyright a blues progression. Well, not the standard 12, but who knows what could occur. Sure. There's, there's nine and a half blues. There's 11 and a half and 11 bar blues. There have been yeah. a few of these odd ones. Yeah. But yeah, the, the wisdom you hear about copyright is insane. I love hearing that about Brian Wilson, you know? Oh, like, yeah. It never happened before. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I've yeah. looked for years. Yeah. If someone, if I'm, I'd love to be corrected, and, yeah. you know, but I haven't found it. Yeah, I mean, he's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we could talk a little bit. You've mentioned it twice. Um, Fair use. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely confusion around fair use, you know, and, and maybe it's it's important to note that fair use is not a it's not a law. There's you know, um, I, my understanding is fair use is, is more or less kind of a, an, an opinion. Um, so maybe you could talk a little bit more about um, what exactly is is fair use. Well, fair use comes from Massachusetts actually in yeah. the 1840s. Two biog two people writing biographies of George Washington. Yeah, and one copied an earlier one. But what he was copying were some of the facts. Like if George Washington is born in 1732 and you, you wrote that in your book and, you know, Mike, Mike King beats me to this Washington biography, I'll make it better. I'll say he's born in 1725. No, facts are facts. Yeah. So if I copied some expression of your book that was just factual, sure. that might be okay because it's not so much original expression. It's not that creative. It's factual. Yeah. So you can copy some things if they're factual-based you know, copyright is to protect creative, like poetry yeah. and lyrics and stuff that's original. So it was con it's considered an exception to the law, like uh, because you can't help but take from some other artist. Mm -hmm. and sometimes, in, and, and intentionally, too, you would want to quote uh, the Beatles open up with the French national anthem for love is all you need. Mm -hmm. or, you know, it, sometimes you quote for a reason. So... It, fair use is kind of the part of the law that tells you how to break the law. Okay. That's one funny way of viewing it. So it is part uh, of the law. Fair it use. is. It's okay. now. So it's not yeah. in 1844 or so as part of the, the judge's decision, what's a common law. Mm -hmm. It finally got put into the law in Section 107 of this last Copyright Act. Uh -huh. But it's spelled out like as four factors should be considered. Right. And one of the big ones is, are you, what, is what you're doing for profit or not for profit? Mm -hmm. So if we're doing something in a Berkeley class, well, that's uh, not for profit. That's mm -hmm. just in this room. So a lot of things can take place. It's like, you know, I'm not going to make money from this teaching the students this one thing that one afternoon. So um, other things, are, but if you're putting a work out, a work of music you're releasing, how much of the work are you taking? Mm -hmm. Taking a couple chords, a, a few seconds or something? Or is it similar? And so the quantity and the quality of it, how original is it? Mm -hmm. Like four chords from a Muddy Waters song where he's going C to F and C to F and then G. Uh, those four chords are not a big deal. Those four chords that open warmth with the sun, Brian Wilson wrote, mm -hmm. oh, they really are. Mm -hmm. So that's looking at the quality, how original is the material you're taking. Mm. So those are things you, you factor in. Mm -hmm. And also the idea of parody. 
in other yeah. words, I want to take from someone's work to comment on that uh, that work. You know, I think you're you're get off your your pompous fool. I'm going to make fun of that your pompous work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to criticize it. I'm going to ridicule it. As an American with the First Amendment, which is not in the Copyright Act, but it intersects with it, mm -hmm. we have the right to criticize other works and make fun of. Mm -hmm. uh, some countries in England, you can't. You know, the, the, wow. it's a different yeah. different animal. Yeah. So they, if they're going about parody, uh, money money Python days and stuff. I, you have to go about it differently, mm -hmm. uh, but we have the right to do that. So, we, and to do it, we have to take from someone's work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the person you're taking from might have a no sense of humor, and b might be so full of himself that he says, you know, you can't, or uh, c proprietary says you cannot do it, and our law says you can, but it's not spelled out. Well, take three notes or six words. So it always is a case by case basis. It's always an opinion. Yeah, right? yeah. it is. It is the opinion of yeah. one, and the other side can find yeah. almost always someone to agree with them. Right. So it's, let's let's get get into a, a specific example. This is pro probably the most widely known example: girl talk. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, girl talk, um, as an example, would would make a song completely out of samples, small snippet, snippets. But he might have four hundred songs in four minutes. Right. You know. So uh, I have always. Heard that the labels haven't gone after Girl Talk because they're nervous that you know his defense would be fair use, and if he wins, then the labels would say it would open the floodgates for more people to do what Girl Talk is doing. Right. But if Girl Talk did Warmth of the Sun and took those four chords, mm -hmm. that could be interpreted as not fair use because it was something original. I mean, how does that that you know? Well, that's that is a, I've been asked about Girl Talk a bunch, and yeah. I, I know the music pretty well. Yeah. Um, you're right about that, that I think it could open the floodgates, like a, the wrong decision right. coming down for some people who think the wrong decision, then suddenly everyone will do it. Uh, that's one of the factors. That's one of the possible reasons why. Another is the idea that how much money has Girl Talk made selling those recordings? That's right. That's right. And so generally it's you have to show... free off a site. Yeah. Yeah. When they say damages, they mean how much money did you make? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've had people contact me many times and even recently and they say we're going we want to sue these people but they haven't made enough money yet mm -hmm. and they're literally having an accountant hired to, to, to does wait. look at things like this <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Right. and sometimes that's why people wait a long time before they sue so uh -huh. the money amount can go up mm -hmm. uh, I, i've jokingly said to students if you're going to inf infringe do it now when yeah. you're not making if it didn't sell but right but yeah i'm just joking about yeah. it but but the idea is part of it is how much money's made yeah uh, but yeah his thing is now, I view him, I, my viewpoint is now I put on my classical music doctoral head uh, hat and I say that that's what Vivaldi did. That's mm -hmm. what Bach did. Mm -hmm. You took from others around you. Mm -hmm. I did a tweet the other day. I got interviewed in this magazine, Substream. Really fascinating new magazine. Mm -hmm. this, the woman who interviewed me was really bright and she's really well prepared. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to get across the idea that, you know, we have borrowings and this, this stuff does occur. And it, it's part of the normal process. When Bach wanted to do a theme and variations, or, or I'm in that training, like the way Bach was trained was the way Beethoven, and it, it keeps going, to Brahms, to Stravinsky, to those of us born in the 60s and 70s and 80s and all that. The way we were trained is to do theme and variations. You mm -hmm. take a melody, you, you doctor it up. Well, if you do that in a, with a pop hit, and you made money doing it, you sued terribly. Yeah. So a lot of, and it's our tradition to, you know, who's going to say Brahms is a bad composer? Mm -hmm. Or Stravinsky redoing Pergolesi and Bach redoing Vivaldi. So it's at odds with musical uh, values, traditions, cultures. Mm -hmm. The law is at odds. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to say that, you know, your law is giving us bad results. Mm -hmm. We've got to find ways to be a little more confident in fair use and to say, of course we can take something. Yeah. Get off your high horse. Your stuff is still selling. You know. Oh, that's another part of fair use is that if you created something that's so good that would have a deleterious negative effect on the original, mm -hmm. then that goes against you. Oh, um, the way incredible. fair use works yeah. is you kind of add up these things. Yeah. Like for profit, not for profit, educational, um, are you selling it? Uh, how much are you taking and what's the quality yeah. of what you're taking, the originality? And is it having a negative market effect? Right. And if it is, then that usually goes against. Yes. Yes, interesting. So it's so, all it's all that stuff. I mean fair use and some some people say it's a it's a defense when you're in trouble. Right. 
And, you know, because you're not going to put out your music with the explanation it's fair use, or mm -hmm. maybe some people do. But someone else is going to say it infringes. Then the defendant, who's then, you know, the one being sued, comes back and says, but here's my fair use reason why I did it. Yeah. So your, your opinion overall is that it, it should be more clear with fair use? That would help? Uh, that Well, it should be more allowable. Right yeah, now, and, okay. and so, but some people think it's just, you know, well, the, the dumbest, I still can't get more foolish than every day I'm, yeah. you know, every day yeah. I'm hustling, every day I'm shuffling. Yeah. Shuffling and hustling are, are way different meanings. Yeah. Uh, and the songs are so different. Yeah. So, yeah, you should, you should sue over something original. Right. Uh, the old, old country hit, uh, Stand By Your Man. Uh-huh. Those four words with those four notes and those two chords are very original. It was surprisingly, wow, it's like yeah. a C chord stand by you, a man to an E chord, uh -huh. C, D, E, B. That's very, very original. Oh, wow. You wouldn't yeah. think. But every yeah. day I'm, no. Yeah. Especially with hip hop. Or oh, right now I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a Busta Rhymes expert. Okay. And it's over Wuha. Ah, okay. What's, what exactly is the deal? Well, his song, Wuha, Wuha, uh -huh. got you all in check, or got them all in check. I'm uh -huh. getting them confused. Um, An Eighth Wonder uh, by uh, Sugar Hill Gang, and that song, they say woo ha got you all in check. Uh -huh. They don't say woo ha woo ha, but woo ha is just because. Assume Buster Rhymes copied it woo ha from Sugar, Sugar Hill, Hill Gang. Yeah. Sugar Hill Gang got it from Kung Fu movies. Okay. You know, it's like that's just an expression. So yeah. you know, what, what is that? You're taking yeah. that common, you know, like yee ha. Yeah. Or oh yeah. And Buster Rhymes definitely watches kung fu movies. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. So he could have just gone right around. Yeah. yeah. So, and, but there's a lawsuit over that. Mm. And I think that's absurd. Yeah. Yeah, because the rest of the music's so different. Right. I mean, I, so, I, what I do is uh, analyzing music, I'm showing how the expression is radically different. Right. Because I'm not even saying he, he copied I'm, I'm definitely not saying he copied yeah. it. Yeah. Might, it may have referenced it, but it's much, much different. Have the number of uh, lawsuits gone, uh, about this sort of thing gone mm -hmm. up over time, or has this been a pretty consistent? It's you know it's so strange because a few years ago, well, especially in the '90s, when there was a decision, Saul Zantz. Yeah, was, I remember this one. Yeah, yeah, Zantz was John Fogarty of Creedence Clearwater Revival was his publisher, mm -hmm. so all that great, all that great Creedence hits. Zantz owned the copyright. Yeah. And then those guys end up hating each other's guts and so forth. Yeah. Lawsuits. He, Saul said that. Um, uh, Fogarty was uh, impersonating himself or something like right, that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that, that was the fascinating thing. Yeah. In the 80s, F Fogarty got sued for infringing Fogarty. Yeah. And right. to put it that way, you yeah. really see how foolish yeah. it is. Yeah. And stylistically, the man, of course, should be similar from the 60s. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And so he, he, Zantz picked a song that he owned from Creedence Days versus one Fogarty now without Zantz yeah. ensued, and, and Zantz lost, as he should. Yes. Um, and actually, he could have picked a better song. Yeah. It, was a, it was a dumb s selection of songs, ah, too. Okay. Because for one, one song had the chords changed 19 times, and the other song had one chord without a chord change. Oh, geez. Now, that's a yeah. huge difference. Yeah, that's yeah, true. So I'm yeah. glad, and also it's pretty funny, the trial, from what, I was, uh, what I've read about it, is that uh, <laughs> they asked Mr. Fogarty, on the witness stand with his guitar, uh, would you mind demonstrating how you wrote Rolling on the River? So the jury's right there, and he's playing guitar, singing, smiling, talking to them, going through. I mean, of course he's going to win. You, know? <laughs> you spent a couple days with Fogarty, you know. Exactly. Like, that's a personal concert with yeah. Fogarty. Yeah. Right. And that um, happens also yeah. in some cases where you get like Charlie Daniels, you put him on the witness stand with, and your honor would like for Mr. Daniels to show how he wrote Devil Went Down to Georgia. Yeah, you know, uh, exactly. It's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> so, so it's been pretty consistent, you think? It hasn't well, been. Well, yeah. you know, but, but saying all, oh, what I was getting at with that was to say that finally Fogarty sued Zantz for like enough lawsuits here. Yeah. And that the plaintiff who sues, especially in a kind of a foolish way, that plaintiff should have to cover the cost of the defendant because mm -hmm. these things get very expensive yeah often before i'm involved six figures have, have happened Oof. it's you know i know yeah. one one situation where a woman in texas had to pay very close to one million dollars mm -hmm. and she didn't have the money but she had i think not a good lawyer and a terrible expert witness mm -hmm. gave her terrible advice mm -hmm. so anyway but that went to the supreme court and, and the idea was that wait a minute, plaintiffs now have to pay. Mm -hmm. So that was supposed to cut back the number of lawsuits. And it seemed like it, 
But now it seems like it's it's up and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people will sue knowing that it doesn't go to trial. I mean, I've been doing this they over 20 something. years. Yeah. yeah. You just say, in other words, for 20 or $50,000, if this goes away, that saves a lot of time. Yeah, right. So often you can, you sue with the 90, I'm not kidding, it's 99% uh, certainty it's going to settle. Yeah. Or it'll be dismissed, but doesn't go into the courtroom Perry Mason style. Sure, yeah. I've been in one courtroom. Oh, you have? Where it really went, yes, four days long. And I you're on the stand. I was on the stand for three uh -huh. days. Oof. Yeah, it's not, it's not fun, even yeah. if you think you're right. Yeah. It's like, oh, jeez. Wow. Yeah, it's not the best. It does seem that, that <laughs> things are a little funny there, you know? Mm -hmm. like, um, and, I mean, there's a new um, registrar of copyrights. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Who, I think she, she spoke about, hey, listen, we know some things are kind of crazy right now. We're going to try our best to fix things. But, like, to adjust copyright, it's very, very difficult. And I think the last major overhaul was 1976, and then right. there's the DMCA in mm -hmm. 1998, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, just, just to actually kind of change fundamentals within copyright is very, very hard. It is very hard, and it's it's still going to be federal. Mm. I mean, one of the ideas that's being floated is that it almost becomes not so federal, but it's small, and it can involve much less money and much much more quickly adjudicated. Uh -huh. There's talk like that, because sometimes, I mean, truly, some big, rich corporations or artists have occasionally really lifted, mm -hmm. stolen, not just been influenced, but they really took something. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm involved in one now where I think they put the headphones on and did it. Oh, wow. The tempo yeah. is the same. Like, what? I mean, yeah. it's that much. Yeah. So it would be good to help someone who really doesn't have the money. Mm -hmm. But then, then there are some of those who don't have the money who are just, in their head, they're hearing similarities mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just tough. If anyone says, here's the simple solution, yeah. I haven't heard it. I speak to people all the time about this. Yeah, no, and it like doesn't I, seem easy. One of the things I truly want to do is to say, let's let's look at the history. Well, let's let's look at the ethics of us as is a civilization, mm -hmm. as a group of people, as as hip hop people, as country music. Let's look at that and see what it is we uh, we do. What is it we value? Do mm -hmm. we want to sue so much? Mm -hmm. And I want to say no. We we should. We're suing over something too little. Mm -hmm. Three notes, four notes. Yeah, it sounds th like that I can yeah. trace to Bach. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. if it's in Bach, don't say you own it. Yeah. Unless they took your Bach four notes and your new lyrics. Yeah. Then that's different. Yeah. Michael, this has been a tremendous conversation, yeah. um, and we could be talking for another I know. 40 minutes. <laughs> um, but I want to thank you for, for coming here. Really excellent. Oh, um, thank you. Your, my pleasure. Your encyclopedic knowledge is just so impressive. Oh, I don't know. Well, <laughs> well that was very good. Yeah. Thank, well, thank you so, so much. I appreciate it very much.